Good afternoon, everybody, in my English 1302 online courses in composition. This is Dr. Myra Tatum Salcido operating from my uh, kitchen office today. I'm having things worked on in my office uh, computer wise, so I'm trying to stay out of their way. Uh, so uh, we are coming up on the first paper that will be due on Martin Luther King Jr. And it's not just uh, upon the man. Uh, he uh, was notable in, with, in himself. Uh, we will be looking at letter from Birmingham jail and rhetorical appeals. Okay, rhetoric, that's a big word. Uh, it does mean manipulation. In ancient times, it meant the best means of manipulation. In order, the best means of persuasion. Oh, what are everything you have to draw to um, conduct yourself into talking somebody down from a ledge who might want to jump from a building? That is manipulation, that is persuasion, and it is a form of using everything you have to beg that person, ask that person to please, please reconsider whatever they're thinking. And that's how this came about in uh, ancient Greece. Uh, it was when people had no attorneys, nobody to defend themselves or their property or anything else, and they would have to go before the entire populace, uh, jury of men only. Women were not allowed, but you could appear in front of a jury of a couple hundred people, and you have to sell your idea is that this, yes, was my property. It belonged to me before this other person started claiming it. You have to have evidence. Uh, you have to have credibility as a speaker. And you have to empathize with people, relate to them where they're coming from. So I have just talked about ethos, logos, and pathos. And everywhere you will find pathos pronounced as pathos, but um, well, what I have from my Greek uh, dictionaries is it was pronounced pathos, P-A-Y-T-H-O-S instead of pathos, P-A-T-H-O-S. So anyways, um, pathos. Um, it's playing on the the sympathy of people, um, calling on their heartstrings, playing emotionally. Think empathy. Think sympathy. Think of making you want to care about what they're doing, what they are saying. How do they get you to care? Well, um, they have credibility to start with. You believe who they are as a person. So your first paper uh, will be to riff off of rhetorical appeals uh, for Martin Luther King Jr. He starts his letter, my dear fellow clergyman. Oh, why is this significant? Well, he was in jail in Birmingham, Alabama in the 1960s for parading without a permit. That means like walking down the street or the center of the street with people and you did not get a permit to do that. Well, is that significant enough to put somebody in jail? In um Birmingham, Alabama, it was. So, uh, it was because he was um, protesting passively, not aggressively. He brought no guns. 
Uh, he did not bring militias. He protested or tried to make his voice heard passively. If a policeman came up to him in the middle of the street, he had instructed him, himself, and all of his followers that uh, drop to your knees, drop to your knees, hold your hands up, drop to your knees and pray. So when police officers came up to him and he dropped to both knees, that is not an aggressive stance. Uh, it is a stance of saying, okay, uh, um, it was not, I surrender. It, it was because he was there to take a stand, even if he had to take a stand on his knees. So why was Martin Luther King Jr. in Birmingham, Alabama? It was because he said wherever there is injustice, he would be there. So to get through this paper, you, oh my gosh, you have to read the entire letter from Birmingham Jail. I have included it in uh, your course with a letter from clergymen that uh, appeared in a newspaper in Birmingham when Martin Luther King Jr. was there, when the Reverend Dr. King was um, protesting things going on in Birmingham that were unequal and worse, brutal to African Americans at the time. So there is a wealth of things in uh, this module, this unit, uh, reading about Martin Luther King Jr., reading letter from Birmingham jail, reading the letter by the clergyman that preceded what resulted in his letter, watching videos and getting engaged with his live speeches, what is left of them, black and white TV back in the day. I was alive when he was assassinated. So it may seem like, oh yeah, a long time ago, but uh, for some of us, it, it was too soon when it happened. So um, for your paper, you will have need to have gone through the Martin Luther King Jr. workshop. Please go through all the works, get to know the person, get to know the context, the background, why he was in Birmingham. I have put a letter from a student as a sample, a student sample essay paper actually, into the module so you can read it and see uh, how to write this paper. It needs to be at least four pages long to the bottom of four pages and then in addition to any, oh I think it's three to five pages but four pages would get you going really well for the semester. Uh, and the final page, an additional page would be work cited where you got the background information and where uh, you got the letter from Birmingham Jail it has to be cited in the work cited page. I will send a page around as a suggestion page. But you have to it, cite every source that you get in the paper. For example, if you were to say Martin Luther King Jr. was not originally named Martin Luther at his birth, then you need to say where you got that information and why. In the course of your paper, um, you might have a source and that source would be included as parentheses. Uh, 
last name of the author of that source, space, page number, in parentheses, period, and that's it. And I will go over that in uh, the next video since this is growing long. But by the time you follow the prompt of finding what you think is his bo best uh, rhetorical personal appeals, was he better when he was uh, addressing logic? Uh, was he better as being credible and ethical? Or was he better in appealing to the sympathies? He did all of these things. So uh, you can get to four pages real easily by not jumping into what the prompt asks you, which is the best paragraph or paragraphs in this essay that you think meet certain rhetorical appeals. Don't just start with that. Go back and start with introducing Martin Luther King Jr. What does his name mean? Why was he in Birmingham? And how did he end up in jail? And how he wrote this letter to respond to fellow clergymen. My dear fellow clergymen, he could have said none of the above. He could have just listed their names. Oh, dear fellow clergyman, dear, nicest uh, greeting at that time of point, that point in time, and uh, that time period. And uh, fellow means I embrace you all into a group. We are fellow clergymen. We are all reverends. We are all men of the cloth. He excluded nobody. He was including everybody and saying, not only that, but being very brave to say, I am a part of you fellow clergymen. I may have black skin, and that may uh, exempt me from being a part of your group, but you know what? I'm going to take a stand. I'm going to say, my dear fellow clergymen, I am as equal as you are, and you are as equal as I am. So that's part one of this video because it's already gone on too long, and I promised you uh, videos on paper one. See you at the next video.